If asked in interview, do you know what is clock tree synthesis? If asked further, do you know what happens underneath the clock tree synthesis? Do you know how to give your inputs to the PNR tool for clock tree synthesis? Watch till the end of the video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back to the computer screen. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the pillow points. Introduction. We'll do a general introduction to the clock tree synthesis scenario. Next, we'll talk about CTS position in the entire VLSI design flow. Next, we'll go in detail what is CTS. With infographics, we will understand the pre and post CTS scenarios with respect to the clocks, buffers and flip-flops. Next, we will mark the different levels that occurs during the CTS. That means these levels were not there when the CTS process has not happened. Next, we will go into the PTS methodologies that are used in VLSI design. Next, we will use our infographics to understand what are the steps in common EDA tool for CTS. That is the menu for today. So without any further delay, let's begin. Introduction. The clock distribution and routing is important in digital design as it impacts power, performance and area, sometimes known as PPA of the SOC design. Next, the clock tree synthesis ETS process impacts maximum operating clock frequency to the clock skew. What is a maximum operating clock frequency? It's nothing but the frequency that your design, that means when it is in chip, that can operate. Process variation generated race around conditions are avoided through CTS. This is a very very important point. When we have a process variation, we have an entire episode on process corners. There we have talked about the process variation. The link is provided in the description. Please go ahead and watch in case you do not know about the process variation. The process variation generated race around conditions are avoided through CTS. We will go in detail in later slides. In test mode, many flip flops are hooked together from a scan chain. What is a scan chain? This is formed in the DFT process of the entire VLSI flow and this test mode is enabled for the testing that is the design for testability which is the DFT. The SKU requirements of a scan chain are patent for the scan clock tree as every path during the test mode is a short path. The clock tree network is responsible for significant amount of power dissipation as it switches most frequently. So one thing here to be very much precise that the clock tree which is synthesized do give a good contribution towards the power consumption of the entire chip because this particular area of the nets, the clock nets has to operate even though any particular lock is off. That means this has to operate at any condition. So this is very very much responsible for significant amount of power dissipation. Clock trees are good candidates for low power VLSI designs. We have entire episode on low power VLSI design. The link is provided in the description. In case you have not watched, please go ahead and watch that. And that will explain why the clock tree is a good candidate for the low power VLSI design. Here we are done with our introduction. So let's move on to the next slide. CTS in the entire VLSI design flow. So here when we talk about the VLSI design flow, we mean that this is the ASIC design flow or the SOC design flow because in analog designs, there will be no clock. So let us begin our VLSI design flow and let us see in which position the CTS is there. That means the clock tree synthesis is there. Design specification. Here in this direction we will proceed. Design specification is the first step where we write our specs maybe in pen and paper or maybe in computer notepad or wordpad or maybe in MS Word. Next we proceed towards the RTL coding which we begin with the Verilog or VHDL or system Verilog kind of languages. Then comes the verification. This is the digital verification of the coding that we have written. Next comes the synthesis once all these steps are done and if needed, if these are ejected together, then once this is freezed, we proceed toward synthesis. Next comes the DFT and the scan chain insertion process. This is for the DFT verification of the chip, whether it is for the simulation or whether it is post silicon. So this has to be finalized here in the DFT step. Next comes our floor planning. So here up to this point, we are in the front end part. And here from the floor planning, we are entering into the back end. Next comes the power routing planning stage. Next comes the global placement. 
next comes the detailed placement so here we have done the planning right now all this planning has to be executed so these are the executions next we have clock tree synthesis and now in right hand side we will proceed in this direction next we have global and detailed routing so whatever plan we have done here right in this stage we have to do the placement here and then we have to do the global power and detail route every routing is done here next comes the layout generation or necessary changes so any particular stage is not done in one particular instance so sometimes they have to get iterated right so they have to iterate multiple times any step you you see steps here any step has to be iterated multiple times to achieve the perfection and less error or zero error whatever is there so for that it has to be iterated multiple times whatever process i have told you here in the entire line or here you are going to see here in this direction all of them are iterated multiple times next comes the drc and lvs next comes the parasitic extraction that is pf extraction in case you are having an asic or in case you have a block you can have a dspf next comes the static timing analysis this is post layout sta we have our entire episode on sta please go ahead and watch that in case you are interested in static timing analysis also there we have talked about different file formats including the parasitic this pex and then we move on towards the em and ir verification this is also dependent upon these particular extraction results and then we proceed toward lec and final tape out checks lec means the layout equivalence check and finally we are ready for tape out so don't think any step happens in one single go each step has to be iterated multiple times maybe these two are interrelated these two are interrelated so the iteration will happen in between these two or in case it has to go back up to this planning stage right it has to go back planning and then it has to come back so any of the stages here has to be iterated multiple times has to be iterated multiple times in today's episode we will focus on block tree synthesis and we know it stands immediately after the planning and the placement here is the planning and placement so after that before the routing begins we have the block tree synthesis so we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide what is cts now we have talked about cts the scenario where it is used let us understand what is cts clock spine routing scheme with all clock pins driven directly from a clock driver the clock driver is nothing but like pll kind of circuit in the digital chip or a xtal that produces the clock so that is the clock driver and the clock spine i will explain in the next uh, infographics where we will be right FPGAs are often used in this fishbone type of clock distribution scheme. Here we talked about FPGAs, although we have in ASIC a clock spine for a gate array. It is needed. The clock spine is nothing but the main branch that is distributing the clock. A clock spine for cell based ASIC. Typical chips have thousands of clock nets. A clock spine is usually driven from one or more clock driver cells. Delay in the driver cell is a function of the number of stages and the ratio of output to input capacitance for each stage. It is called taper. Clock latency and clock skew. An engineer tends to minimize both latency and skew. So these terms are well explained in the STA series. Please go ahead and watch them. You will find the chapters so you can directly navigate to the particular section where these are explained. What is CTS? We have briefed here. Let us see what happens in CTS. We are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Pre and post CTS we will explain with our infographics. So this is pre CTS stage. We have a clock root that means it may be a XTEL or maybe a PLL. Whatever we have, right? Generally in circuits we have PLL as a clock driver. That means the clock root. And without CTS we have a direct connection and branches like this. This so they go to the end leaf cells. That is the flip flop. After we have the CTS, what happens that there are multiple buffers are inserted. In between so that the proper power management and the levels of the clock are maintained in case you have a clock getting here right somewhere so here we are having the plain buffers right but however we can have clock getting so clock getting i have explained in the episode and the link of the episode is given in this description of this video in case we have a clock getting so that will also appear in this particular tree so here we are done with the simple diagram let us zoom into this one how different levels are there and what are they are named various levels during cts so here we have drawn the same picture however we have separated each of the section so this one is the clock source 
this is called the clock source or clock root from where all the clocks are generated and next level is the driver level one driver these are the level one drivers these are planned and inserted through the clock tree synthesis so this synthesis happens during the cts next we have the second level of drivers here these are the end product of the cts at last we have the leaves that means the receivers here the clock tree synthesis actually insert this level this level and in case there is some clock getting here it will be also insert so you can see that from one and two these two levels two more levels or more than two levels are inserted through the cts the complexity of modern age that means now we are in the sub 45 nanometer range or rather we can say sub 10 nanometer range the complexity and the levels are too much in the cts so here we are done with the infographics explaining what happens what levels are inserted in cts let's move on to the next slide CTS methodology. Now here in this slide we will talk about the different methodologies that are used for CTS. These may be done by a designer or these may be they are already existing in a tool. However, some methodologies are behind the CTS. We will just touch base on them. In order to reduce the iteration and TAT, TAT means the turn around time, clock tree designs methodologies are developed by engineers. This can consist of sub steps that means the design of the tree structure, layouting of the clock tree, synchronization of multiple trees of the same clock source and there could be clock gating. In detail the steps can be generate netlist with specific number of receivers in the clock tree, design of the structure from bottom up process, bottom up means you have a design from a top view but however this is developed from the bottom that means the leaf cell is designed first and then we proceed towards the different levels so these methodologies have to be developed first and then implemented through cts use of the layout tool features to form the clock tree that means the clock tree has to be formed for that we have to use the layout tool with the methodologies we are preparing as engineer or which is provided with the idea tool to analysis of delay and skews of all clock nets iterate with correction until the target is achieved just to have the turnaround time we have to iterate multiple times so that is the main thing of any vlsi process step any step in vlsi design has to be optimized until the goal is reached so here we are done with the methodologies that either an engineer does or they exist in the eda tool or the combination of both or some improvisation or new methodologies those are implemented however this is the basic thing that happens in cts so here we are done with the cts methodology let's move on to the next slide CTS in EDA tool. Here in this slide, we will use the infographics. These images are taken from internet. So, please don't expect a tool demo after this one. So, here in our commonly used EDA tool, what we will have? We will have the option for the clock specification file. In case you don't have, say your engineer do not have, you can use the gen spec to generate one. So generally, it is called a clock tech file, TS tech or C tech. This kind of extension will be there and these will be the output directory. And once you are done, you have to click on OK. In case you are not done, before this all the steps are done in the EDA tool. This image is for the CTS only. So here you can gen spec or in case you have a handcrafted CTS tech file or CTS file, you have to use this button to load it here in this. And this will give the output direct. And once you are done with these two, you click on OK or you can click on apply and then click on OK. Once you are done with this window, you, the next window comes like this. So you can see here the library is there and here the buffer buffer and inverters will be there so you can see and you have to pick up the buffer or inverter whatever you want to include in the cts tree so those you have to hand pick nowadays the uh, complexities are there so there could be different kind of buffers and all those have to be there and in case you have a output specification file that has to be pointed through this so once you are done you have to click on apply and then ok or simply on the ok you can see these two images are different here in the even in the title bar right so these are picked from internet you can understand but however for your understanding you will have these things and whatever methodology is behind there you will uh, understand once you run these things in your actual EDA tool here we are done with this particular slide let's move on to the next slide Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In case you have some dislikes, put that as in words in the comment section down below. And bye for today.